Okay, everyone. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Chris Rentner. Uh, I am the founder and CEO of Spence Labs, a new technology company in the fintech area, uh, in the fintech payment space uh, in cannabis. Today, I look forward to speaking with you all about uh, a little bit about briefly just educating you about what Spence is and, and who we are and what we're trying to accomplish, but then also talking about why uh, we got into this space, the challenges for fintech in the cannabis industry, and what we look to accomplish and how we look to support the entire industry with our payments infrastructure. And so um, the first thing here is, is, is about Spence and, and why we're actually going down this path. Um, for all of you that are in this industry, I'm sure you're all very aware of the fact that payments are difficult on a good day uh, and complicated on most days. And there are a whole slew of different reasons for that and opportunities to solve those problems. Yet at the same time, uh, the complex regulatory infrastructure, the lack of financial institutions participating in the space, uh, bring a, a significant level of complexity to the overall problem. And so when, um, as we are going through this process, I wanted to really highlight our capabilities uh, of a fintech company first, where our goals are to provide the industry with the same sort of network capabilities for payments that have been provided to every under other industry over the last 20 to 30 years. And as we think about that, we think about three really main challenges that exist in the, in the industry today. First is contactless transactions. Now, we didn't start the company on the premise of the uh, global pandemic that started uh, in March but we always did believe that contactless payments were uh, the way to go and where basically every other industry has gone, especially outside of the United States. And so we did a lot of research on contactless payments around the world as we were thinking about how to deliver our platform. The second thing that we felt was most important was uh, ubiquity. Uh, any payment solution in the market needs to focus on how to get to the quickest path to a ubiquitous solution across consumers uh, and merchants. And then finally, we knew that there needed to be a reason for customers to come to a payment network. Uh, we all know that we just want payments to happen, whether you're a bank, whether you're a technology company, whether you're a merchant, um, whether you're the consumer. There has to be a reason to come to utilize this payment system. And so having engaging tools for the consumers and the dispensaries to, uh, to encourage people to participate in this solution was a key element of, of our platform. And then finally, uh, we really wanted to make sure that we addressed the dispensary needs. Um, if, if dispensaries were not incentivized significantly to make this solution available, we knew that it would never gain the ubiquity that we wanted. Um, and so uh, I'm very excited today to kind of talk about what we see as the future, what we see as the opportunity, and how working in industry from a cash only basis uh, to a almost entirely digital basis, we believe is something that can be achieved in just a matter of, uh, of a short period of time, maybe a couple of years at the most. Now, the first thing here is we can't ignore what's going on in the world globally. Uh, with the pandemic that is in place today, uh, we have really no other reason to get out of cash than this singular one. Um, and so it, it, this pandemic has really rubbed uh, cash uh, being dirty in our face. And so while it's not being carried by the majority of people out there in the marketplace any longer, and the process to actually manage the cash and process it in behind the scenes and for dispensary owners to pay their employees with cash or, or buy wholesale products with cash, our belief was that the pandemic was just a secondary catalyst to push a uh, payment solution into the market. And so the, the first thing that I wanna focus here about FinTech specifically is that how payments in a digital sense 
are already ubiquitous in every other industry. Just in the last 30 to 60 days, we've seen some of the largest players in the world uh, announce relationships for mobile, contactless, QR code base, or uh, non-credit network based payment uh, solutions. Uh, Venmail and PayPal have always made it very clear that their intent is to get into the merchant processing world and supply these services to uh, merchants all over the country and, and frankly, all over the world. And even further, uh, new types of credit offerings are also emerging in the industry. Uh, Affirm, being one of the leading players in the space, has shown that supplying a cardless, contactless, uh, POS or e-commerce financing solution can actually rival a credit card offering for consumers as well as for the merchants or e-commerce providers that they partner with. And so this is a huge part of the opportunity that exists for the cannabis industry today. We should all be thinking about how we can leverage payments, lending, uh, during this pandemic and use the regulatory environment that we all have to deal with, whether we like it or not, to our advantage. And so what we see in comparison to what is happening in outside of the cannabis industry today is what we believe can be brought to the cannabis industry. And so when you look at the POS providers, the e-commerce solutions, new delivery and pickup offerings, the huge gaping hole that exists for them on a revenue perspective is the lack of payments, but also for the consumer experience is an ability to uh, seamlessly have integrated payments baked into the experience that you are looking for. And so that provides all of us an amazing opportunity to supply that those capabilities to the, to the entire industry. And so uh, while Spence is working on this, we believe that the other companies in the marketplace, payment providers, our competitors, the e-commerce companies, POS offerings should come together collectively and offer a solution that can be exciting for uh, all of the consumers and all of the dispensaries in the space. Now, why is that important? I mean, if this industry was small, uh, no one would really care and no one would really think about this. But if we look at where this industry is trending with the multi-state operators growing every single year, with independent operators opening up more and more locations, whether it's in mature markets or new markets, we all know that this industry is growing and it's growing quickly. And frankly, we, I believe we have proven that through this pandemic, a, this industry can also be seen as recession proof, no different than the alcohol and tobacco industries. And so this is really the time before this industry gets too large, where a solution would be almost impossible to, to bring to market. The opportunity is really now to bring an offering into the space. Now, the only way to do that is with some really solid partners. Uh, as part of our offering, but uh, in conjunction with conversations that I've had with banks in the industry, one of the biggest things that we hear from bankers, uh, from other technology companies, uh, from dispensary owners is a concern around trust. And, and I think that's really a shame because it seems like over the last handful of years, you know, players that were early to the market uh, didn't have their solutions fully baked. And in part, I understand why that is. People were trying to get in, provide solutions, uh, create exciting innovation, so on and so forth. What I believe is the phase two of payments in the fintech space and cannabis is transparent uh, centers of trust that can be created around the country uh, utilizing financial institutions that have jumped into this industry uh, in an exciting way and create these, as I've said, kind of centers of trust for the cannabis payments industry and for the dispensaries that are willing to operate in it.
In this case, Burling Bank, a uh, Chicago headquartered financial institution, a very innovative bank that's been around for 30 plus years, started initially in the cannabis industry, uh, has been operating in the fintech space for a half a dozen years or more. They are one of what I would say the leaders in the space in creating this ecosystem of trust or this center of trust. For the cannabis payments industry, and uh, you know, Michael Bush, the the chair, the CEO of that financial institution, is uh, a, a believer of the industry, is a believer of fintech. He is uh, commonly seen on panels uh, for regulators talking about the fintech and payments industry, talking about banking as a service and the capabilities that are made available as part of that offering. And so uh, if more banks like Burling Bank uh, come together, no different than how some of the credit card networks were formed 30 plus years ago, uh, a conglomerate of banks got together to create this center of trust, which then resulted in a u ubiquitous payment ecosystem that has created tons and tons of value across the entire industry, uh, not, just, um, not just in, well, obviously not in cannabis, but in other areas. I think the other area to think about here is how banks and technology companies should think about what happens as this industry and the regulatory environment around it change. And that is really what is up to a number of the technology companies. Again, whether that's Spence, whether that's the POS systems, whether that's e-commerce providers, what we need to do is think about supplying solutions that are not just ACH, not just cashless ATMs, but truly think into the future of legalization and how can we utilize real-time payments as part of a payments ecosystem? How can uh, we bring alternative credit methods that don't involve the credit, the card networks? But also, if consumers want to use their credit cards, if consumers want to use their debit cards, um, Spence and other payment providers or other technology companies should look into the future, partner with the right ISOs, partner with the right financial institutions, like organizations like Burling Bank and build the future state of the industry. We should be the innovators on the technology side of things. And so I believe that uh, early players in the market should then complement the future innovation in the market and be seen as, uh, again, the center of trust in financial institutions, and in the technology companies so that uh, the dispensary world, the cannabis industry can be served uh, from a payments ecosystem no differently than the rest of, of any other industry. Now, I also want to talk about how compliance is an important piece of this process. At the end of the day, we are all very aware of the regulatory landscape. And what we need to make sure as we all get into payments, as, in we, as, as we use technology, as these financial institutions jump into this opportunity, is that we need to have a very good understanding, both from the dispensary understanding of the complexities that come in operating in this industry and working with financial institutions and working with payments. And I'm a big fan of, of one of the companies that does a really good job in this industry, Shield Compliance. Uh, no other CEO uh, really believes in if we can all just slow down for just a moment and think about how providing transparent access to the banking industry and utilizing technology to manage the regulatory risk, uh, we can all do a really good job and, and have a really robust financial ecosystem available inside of uh, this industry. And so let's talk a little bit about what regulations mean here. Um, I think we all know some of these statements that are being made, whether it's uh, the coal memo that was rescinded, uh, whether it was, you know, Attorney General Barr who has made some comments. Uh, you know, I'm from Chicago, so Governor Pritzker has made some statements about this industry. And so what we really need to think about here is, is creating an ecosystem where we address the federal concerns using FinCEN guidelines, using uh, the coal memo, even though it's been rescinded, uh, engaging with regulators and our, our senators and our uh, 
um, our, our house representatives to find the correct regulation for this industry that is right sized for the size of this industry, but all for, also for the risks uh, associated with this industry. And so SAR filing is important as we've seen, you know, more and more financial institutions are getting into this space uh, and, and that's really great. But what we do need is a more comprehensive national, uh, let's say, addressing of this issue. We all know that safe banking has been in the market for a while and multiple different iterations have been, uh, you know, offered. Um, you know, at, at the end of the day, we don't know if or when that's going to get passed. We don't know what parameters are going to be met when it is passed. And so working with innovative technology companies and, and the financial institutions that are backing them is a critical element to making this opportunity successful. Now, uh, when, we, when we think about those technology companies, I, I love highlighting some of them. Um, no question as the CEO, I'm going to highlight ourselves, but I think there are a lot of other complementary solutions in the market that should be looked at. If you as an operator, if you as a technology company are not collaborating with some of these players in the space and others, if I have forgotten somebody, I apologize. But many of these names are leaders in the industry in their, in their certain areas and finding ways to collaborate finding ways to coexist together, finding ways for the Visa and the MasterCard of the cannabis industry to emerge, or the Square and the um, PayPal to emerge, only really helps this industry further. And so I can encourage all of you that, you know, by having a robust payments ecosystem, by having a, um, a confidence in the regulatory environment that should uh, encourage us all to innovate further and think harder about how to solve these problems and collaborating together with uh, this overall opportunity, I think is really what's going to push um, the industry forward and push uh, technology forward in this industry and, and generally make the regulators then more comfortable with how we're operating. Um, at this point, I feel I'm a little bit ahead of schedule, unfortunately, because that was my last slide. Um, Shallow, do we have any additional questions from uh, people? Can I address any other concerns or questions that people may have today? Um, I'd be happy to talk a little bit more about some of the other payments experiences that we've been thinking about in the industry. How, how could we fill the last couple of moments here? Hi, uh, Chris. One of the questions is, what happens if cannabis gets legalized? Yeah, um, so I talked about that very briefly. Um, in short, it, cannabis legalization is something that I look forward to on a national scale. Um, and whether that's not specifically to say from a user's perspective, it's, it's from a regulatory perspective. It gives just more confidence. I talked about that any dispensary or technology company that's in the industry should be thinking about the future state of this industry. And so uh, legalization, what that brings to us are more options. Now we don't have to use just ACH or uh, real-time payments or alternative credit options. Once legalization happens, once decriminalization or descheduling occurs, the card networks uh, have indicated that would be, they would be much more interested in this space. Spence specifically is looking at that opportunity and preparing for the future state when legalization occurs so that we can make the ability to pay via ACH, real time, uh, alternative credit, or a credit card are all available to consumers through our system. And so legalization just makes more opportunity and creates uh, more areas for consumers to have flexibility in their payments. I do see some other questions here about um, Bitcoin and peer-to-peer -peer wallets. So peer-to-peer -peer wallets, I, I think, are very exciting. Uh, 
that is something that's kind of very much like Venmo, where you load up money and then you can transfer funds between an individual and an individual. In this instance, we're less concerned about individuals transferring funds to another individual. We're more interested about transferring funds from an individual to a merchant. Um, Spence is one of the companies out there that promotes a consumer to merchant peer-to-peer -peer payment ecosystem. That's what one of our capabilities are today. There are also other players in the space that do make those types of functionality and features available. Bitcoin is a very interesting thing. I think Bitcoin um, is interesting because of the way that the blockchain networks are built and the advantages that that brings. The downside, I believe, of Bitcoin and some of the players that have gotten into that space is that regulations are hard enough as it is. We're already dealing with a, a product that is seen on a federal level as illegal. And you then have to deal with the complexities of that at the financial services level with banks that are interested in, in operating in this uh, gray area space uh, in the cannabis industry. To then bring Bitcoin or blockchain-based coin networks into the discussion just adds another layer of regulations and complexity. And I think at some point, the bar is just too much to get over for the financial institutions to get comfortable. And so while I think uh, a blockchain, Bitcoin-based uh, opportunity is exciting and interesting, I just don't know if the if we are there yet, and I just don't know if that's something that's going to gain mass adoption because of the complexities that come with it from a regulatory side. Uh, I've seen another question here regarding how Spence and Burling Bank uh, to came together uh, on a partnership side. Um, the the short version of that is is the executive team at Burling Bank and I partnered together on an internal strategy. Uh, after they had banking, been banking a number of cannabis-related uh, businesses over the past few years. Spence, before Spence was even a company or a brand or a name or even a product, was actually incubated from uh, the napkin on an idea during a lunch uh, internally at the financial institution. And that goes back, and I'll just scroll back to that uh, slide actually uh, from Burling Bank, where uh, Michael Bush, the CEO, talks about the center of trust. So Burling Bank was used as the center of trust to incubate the idea of payments in the cannabis industry. And then they built the compliance, spoke with the regulators, built that emphatic uh, transparency at the, the financial institution level, but the security and the anonymity to the consumer uh, about purchasing using a digital solution. And so in the combination about Burling Bank and Spence coming together, it was a uh, year plus relationship that was discussed uh, internally and then externally with regulators and then was announced uh, this summer. And so it was a long uh, forming relationship that came over a period of time. Um, I, I see another person is asking, and I believe the question, Thomas Lockwood, I believe the question that you're asking is, is that states are starting to uh, have issues about mobile driver's licenses, and how does that play a significant issue in technology? Um, frankly, I, I think further digitization of identification, or even if it's not digitized uh, identification, I think solutions such as payments or delivery companies should start thinking about how can we ensure that we are uh, passing this product along to people that are of the right age uh, and that purchased it uh, legally. And so whether it's more digital based identification or technology that can scan driver's licenses or, or IDs to verify the authenticity and the identity of that person and their ability to actually receive said products uh, is an important part of this. Uh, Spence, I can tell you, I personally have explored the idea of driver's license, digital real-time verification as part of the, some of the functionality in our system. And I'm encouraged by what that could bring I think the important piece though will be for the states to allow for the sale of cannabis, the transaction to take place actually outside of the retail store 
Uh, in Illinois, that's not an option today. I know in some states, delivery is legal. And so uh, more states jumping on to the idea that delivery is a good thing as long as uh, the verification of the individuals is conducted correctly. Uh, I think that can be done through technology. I believe that can be done through uh, mobile-based uh, identification. And so that's a huge opportunity. And I, I think there's, there's really something there. And I believe the technology companies that are already in the industry today can make that available. Um, I'm looking at other questions. Uh, Beth Horowitz, I see that you had a, a question um, about how transactions flow through the platform. Uh, th the simple version is, is that a consumer signs up for our platform. You then connect your bank account using our encrypted uh, account aggregation provider. And then your bank account is then connected to the Spence payment network. From there, uh, Burling Bank is our center of trust for payment processing and compliance, and funds are able to be moved from the consumer bank account directly to the dispensary bank account uh, with very little time in clearing, transfer, uh, and movement of those funds. There was another question. Um, our, our website uh, very specifically is gospence.com. Uh, we don't have a consumer versus merchant. All of the information is there. There's a partner page for any merchants or, or interested people. Um, another question, Andrew, thank you for uh, asking the question. What's the difference between us and say Zelle uh, or Venmo for that case? And I'm gonna go actually back to a slide that I used earlier uh, about that kind of specific question. So the difference between say a Spence and a Zelle or a, a firm or a Venmo and a PayPal, it, the very short version is, is that uh, those organizations are large, typically publicly traded companies or working with large national chartered financial institutions. And um, today, because of the national or federal illegality of the product, uh, these organizations are unwilling to jump into this industry. Um, if you think about it from a pure technology standpoint, though, many of the things that Spence and other players are doing in the industry are building the same or relatively same types of technology that Venmo, PayPal, or a firm have built, but they're doing it in a way that they have made it uh, available uh, appropriately to the cannabis industry. And so uh, think of us as a combination of Venmo, a firm, and an open loop credit card network like Visa and MasterCard all combined into one company uh, because of the federal illegality and the scheduling of the product that is being sold in the cannabis industry. All right, I think that seems like everyone's questions and Shiloh, I, I believe um, we're coming to the end of the session here. Uh, thank you again, everybody, for taking the time today. Uh, if you do have any other further questions, please feel to reach out to me uh, at any time. And uh, I, again, appreciate you all taking time to spend with me this afternoon. Have a good rest of your days.